my cousin was very religious. N not, not him, but the mother. Shot a mother. And the church was eight miles if you go around the road, but if you took the shortcut through the woods, it was only four miles, only four miles. And what they would do, th they had the car, they would go and pick up people, but me and Shot, we had to walk through, but we better be on time. And when we was, uh, you probably heard those saying that, I'll see you tomorrow if the Lord's willing and the creek don't rise. Well, there's something to that because you always had to cross a creek somewhere. And when that creek was swell, when it would rain, that creek would rise. And it was difficult. It was dangerous to even try to cross. Cross, And it always had a log that you had to walk across, a round log. And you had to balance yourself. And if it were raining and get wet, that log was slippery. And I couldn't swim. If you fall off in that creek and it was really running real fast, you would get drowned. And so this particular Sunday, me and Shy, we was playing out there in the woods and we was on our way to church. But when we got there, we could hear the singing going on. And I said, oh, man, they done started. I said, we in trouble. So we sat out there and we got us a little plan together. I said, you know what? Let's go sit on the front row. And your mama, I, my cousin, she'll be proud of us. He said, that's a good idea. So we went in church, and it was a Baptist church. We went in church, and uh, we, we walked all the way up to the front and sat on the front row. And I cut my eye back at her, and she was sitting back there. She was just grinning. And I told Shout, I said, man, it worked. So we sat there, and the preacher preached. So when, this, when the service was over, the preacher and all the deacons come walking up to us and say, oh, I see we got some candidate for baptism. I said, baptism? It was a mourner's bench. In the Baptist church, I know in the South, they had what they call mourner's bench. And those that wanted to give their heart to the Lord or join the church or want to be baptized, <laughs> they sat on the front row. I said, oh, God. And so the preacher came down. <laughs> and he asked me, he said, how do you want to join? By Christian experience or by letter? I didn't know what to say. I said, by letter? So he said, okay, you're a candidate for baptism. We're going to baptize you guys. So after a few days, baptism, when they had baptism, they didn't have no pool. They would go down and back up that creek. They would put logs and things and back up the creek so it would be deep enough for us to get baptized in. And remember, I couldn't swim, and I was really afraid of water. And it was 18 of us, and I was the number 18. And they would walk down in the water, and they was baptizing them, and I was getting so nervous because I didn't want to walk out in all that water. First of all, I was afraid of water, and I was afraid of snake. And the people used to say, when you get baptized, uh, if you see a snake in the water, that means that, that that person got the devil in them. Or if they get choked, they got the devil in them. Well, I went out there, and I walked off in that water, and it was taking my breath. And, you know, when cold water started you hitting you around your stomach, you <laughs> I was gasping. And they baptized me, and by that time, the old deacon was tired. And they took me out in the water, and I felt his hand come loose from my back. And I got caught up on that water. I liked to drown. I was choked. I was coughing. I was spitting up water. <laughs> and I know the folk were saying, uh-huh, he got the devil. And I was saying to myself, you're right. I didn't want to get baptized anyhow. <laughs> so, one for Tuscaloosa. After we had stayed down in Tuscaloosa for a while, we spent about a year down there. I went to school there. And my sister sent for us, so we went back to Bruton. I went to, uh, we went to a, a school called Lincoln, uh, not Lincoln, uh, it was called Booker T. Washington. And it only went from the first to the ninth grade, just like the other school did, but it was, it was a building. It had like three different floors. And I was in the seventh grade. So I went back to that school that I started when I was in the seventh grade. My aunt, she was different than my mama. My aunt sold whiskey, and she would get drunk, and she would clown. So one day she got drunk, and she called up to the school, and she t told our principal that I was stubborn. And so she told him, so I want you to beat it out of him. And uh, so... <laughs> And he, he loved that because he loved to whip you behind. He was a short man, and he sort of, his, his teeth was, you see people, I guess we call it buck teeth. His teeth sort of protruded out over his bottom lip. Ah, but that man was something else. 
So I started to school there. And, uh, when you would be in the hallway, line up, he would come down the hallway and, and he would look at you. He, he was going to find something wrong somewhere. When you were standing in line, if you was just a little bit out of line, he would snatch you out of that line, and, but he would take his fist and he would beat you in your back. So one day I was in class. He came up, and he came up, and he stood right by me. And it, his word was, bro, he kind of talked, bro, bro, brother. Bro, bro, bro. You know, he had that, my brother. He looked at me, and he said, stand up, stand up. So I stood up. What did I do? He said, what, 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 what? He saw a talk like this. He said, what, 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 what is your name? I said, Wade. He said, I'm going to ask you again. What is your name? I said, Wade Hooks. He said, I'm going to ask you one more time. And if you can't tell me what your name is, I'm going to take you down to my office and I'm going to whoop your behind. Oh, boy. So I said, my name is, I, no, I said, Wade Patterson Hooks. So he jumped up and he said, go to my office, go to my office, go to my office. And he took me down on the first floor. We was up on the third floor. And he pulled off his coat. He always had on the whitest shirt. And he reached and got a, that board. And he said, bend over, bend over. I bend over and that man came down on my behind. Oh, that hurt so bad. And every time he would hit me, he said, oh, 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 like he was getting a kick out of it. And I was, he said, bend over again. He was always going to give you five paddles. And it would hurt so bad. And when he got through with me, he said, do you know why I whipped you? I said, no, sir. He said, what grade are you in? I said, uh, the ninth. He said, and you don't know how to make a sentence? And what he whipped me for is because I didn't make a sentence. I just answered his question when he asked me what my name was. And he wanted me to say, my name is Wade Hooks. And he told my behind up. And I got so afraid of that man until when he would come in class and he would always come after me. When, they, when he would walk in the room, everybody would look at me. So one day he'd come in the room and just out of the blue sky, he'd say, all the boys, get up and let the girls sit down. Get up and let the girls sit down. So you know how the, the school uh, desk were. You know, you had your books underneath. So I bent over to pick up my book. And uh, next thing I know, he grabbed me and he started to beat me in my back with his fist. He just beat me. I said, get up and let the girls sit down. And I was scared to death. Well, he knew I didn't have my, you know, my brothers was all in the service. And uh, daddy, daddy had also died by then. I didn't have nobody to protect me. And he knew that. And one day he came up in classroom. I, his, his wife was my uh, homeroom teacher. She was a sweetheart. And he came in and he says, uh, he walked right up to me. Everybody knew he was coming from me. And boy, my heart be up in my throat because that man, that hurt when he whipped me. He hit, you, he hit you so hard. So he came up to me. He said, stand up, brother. I stood up. And I can't remember for the life of me what the question was, but I remember him asking me, did I do whatever he was asking? Did you do such and such a thing? I said, no, sir. He said, I'll ask you again. He said, did you do it? I said, no, sir. He said, I'm going to ask you one more time. Did you do it? I said, no, sir. He said, I'll tell you what. He said, I'm going down to my office. And he said, I'm going to come back. And he said, when I come back, if you don't tell me the truth, I'm going to whip your behind. That was his word. I'm going to whip your behind. And, oh, I'm miserable now. I don't know when he's going to come back. You know, I'm sitting there. I hope he just hurry up and come back so I can get it over with. And finally, after 15 to 20 minutes or so, he came back. And he came up to me. He said, stand up, brother. He said, did you do it? I said, yes, sir. He said, now I'm going to whip you for lying. And took me downstairs and tore my behind up. So finally... I got in the, uh, I think I'm getting ahead of myself. I, I got in the 10th grade. In the 10th grade, we started playing basketball. And uh, he was a sports fan, and I ended up being one of the stars. I'll, I'll, I'll get back to that. I want to backtrack a minute because there's something that I really uh, missed here that I want to tell you guys about. When I first got to Bruton, I was like 12 years old, and everything that, the kids in Bruton would do. We had no place to go. It was in a small town. And the black kids couldn't go anywhere. So what we would do on Saturday, that was the, that was the day that we would all go to the movie theater. <laughs> so one day, uh, I had found three friends, three uh, brothers. And we was walking 
toward downtown. Well, these two, these two girls came up behind us, and they was older than we were. And one of them say, uh, hey, cutie. You know, I said, mm, I sure hope they're talking to me. I hope she's talking to me. But I was scared to look around. We was all scared to look around just for fear she wasn't talking to us. You know, we look around. She was like, I ain't talking about you. And so she said, hey, cutie. And I said, oh, I hope she's talking to me. So she did that about three or four times, and we was afraid to look around. And finally, she described. She said, hey, you, with the whatever color I had on. She said, you. And I say, I turned around, and I said, me? She said, yes, you. She said, what is your name? Well, I was new in town. I had just gotten there, you know. She said, what is your name? So I said, Wade. She said, where do you live? And I told her. She said, you are cute. Well, you know, I agreed with her. You know, of course I was cute. I like that. So <laughs> we walked on to the show. And what we would do, we would get, we would get down to the movie theater about 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And we would stay all day long. And the movie just keep repeating itself. That, that was our outing. And the other kids would come in later. So that night when we was on our way home, we got, uh, she was walking with me. And she held me by my hand. I was scared to death because I didn't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I don't know nothing about courting at 12 years old. And I had been you know, playing with little girls when I was smaller, but it was nothing serious because I didn't know anything serious. So we was walking. <laughs> and she grabbed me by the hand and she stopped me. And she turned me around. It was dark outside. It was nighttime then. She says, uh, you want to kiss me? I almost said, yes, ma'am. Because <laughs> she, she was quite a bit older than me. She said, you want to kiss me? I said, yes. And so our lips come together, and all of a sudden, I felt something go down my throat <laughs> and gag me. I didn't know what that was. I was biting. I was spitting. I was trying to get that thing out of my mouth. That girl had them put her old long tongue down my It went all the way and choked me. <laughs> and she looked at me and she said, you bit my tongue. I said, you had no business with it in my mouth. What are you doing putting your nasty tongue in my mouth? You know, I didn't know nothing about that's what you're supposed to do. Anyway, she said, you'll never kiss me again. I said, I don't want to kiss you no more. And I said,